What is a woman? The debate rages on. This week, a court in Australia decided that this person is 100% a woman. This is Roxanne Tickle, who, believe it or not, was born male, but now identifies as a woman, even if her hairline doesn't. I just wish that when Roxanne Tickle had transitioned, she'd picked the name Tess instead. Roxanne sued the social media platform Giggle for Girls, which aimed to be a female-only space claiming that she was unlawfully barred from using the app in 2021 after the firm and its CEO, Sal Grover, said she was a man. A man? Does this look like a man to you? No, this is the most womanly woman who ever woman, from the female pattern baldness to the girly stubble. The app, Giggle for Girls, used AI to filter out men who are trying to gain access to the app because women want to feel safe to discuss intimate feminine issues knowing that no men are watching, and to keep out weird or predatory men. Women discuss issues such as periods or polycystic ovary syn syndrome or cervical cancer, which only biological females experience, despite some left-wing politicians insisting that men can grow I don't know if it's transphobic, but it, it's not um, accurate, Nick. I mean, obviously, you, it's probably the case that only uh, that trans women don't have ovaries, but a cervix, I understand, is something that you can have uh, following various procedures and hormone treatment and all the rest. Crocodile Dundee had a much simpler test to see if someone's a woman or not. Something matter, darling? Oh. Ah, pleased to meet you. It's okay, he's Australian. But this test case, or test tickle case, rested on Australia's Sex Discrimination Act and has far-reaching ramifications around the world for female-only spaces being forced to allow access to women like me. The judge Robert Bromwich said that Giggle for Girls had considered sex to mean an unchangeable sex of a person at birth or their biological sex. He said sex is changeable. Sex is not confined to being a biological concept referring to whether a person at birth had male or female physical traits. I mean, physical traits like having a cock or having X chromosomes. The court judgment said sex can refer to a person being male, female or another non-binary status and also encompasses the idea that a person's sex can be changed. So gender identity rather than biological reality is now defining what is a woman in Australia. And more than that, sex is no longer a biological reality. Up until now, sex has been a biological scientific category, male and female, and gender has been the socially defined category, man or woman, that sits on top and in most cases correlates with the sex. You can identify as whatever you want, but you can't change your biological sex. If you've got a Nissan Micra, you can whack a Ferrari body kit on it, and it might fool people from a distance, but up close they'll be like, Jesus Christ, has that car got testicles? And the mechanic can open the bonnet and see the one litre engine and say that this is categorically not a Ferrari, and point to the Nissan parts. In mammals, I think Roxanne Tickle is a mammal, although she maybe identifies as a fish. Well, in mammals, primary sex determination is strictly chromosomal. The female is X X and the male is XY. A scientist can observe these chromosomes and thus determine if a specimen is male or female. The judge in this case is now saying that chromosomes and science is irrelevant. What determines whether someone is male or female is whether they identify as a male or female. Even as a woman, I think that this is ridiculous. It's essentially a religious belief like transubstantiation in Catholicism, where you believe that Eucharistic prayer literally turns wine and bread into the blood and body of Jesus Christ. Although in defense of transubstantiation, at least wine looks a bit like blood. Roxanne Tickle looks like the bass player from Slade. The court's decision seemed to be based on feelings rather than facts. In his written decision, Bromwich drew attention to the behaviour of Grover, including laughing at a caricature of Tickle during the trial. Grover's explanation that it was funny in the context of the courtroom was obviously disingenuous. It was offensive and belittling and had no legitimate place in the respondents prosecuting their case. So the judge essentially found Sal Grover guilty of blasphemy and of mocking religion. Imagine Galileo laughing at the notion of the sun orbiting the earth instead of giving the appropriate religious reverence to it. I reckon I could get the same judge to force Auto Trader to list my Nissan Micra in the Ferrari section. Anna Cody, the Sex Discrimination Commissioner in Australia, released a statement on Friday commending the court's decision. No one in Australia should face exclusion or discrimination based on sex or gender identity. But they should. There are obvious reasons that we need some discrimination. I mean, a biological male harassing and demanding access to a female-only space? I'm old enough to remember when that would be the criminal act. 
They are men with nefarious intentions who will exploit the system to gain access to women's spaces. Look at men like double rapist Adam Graham who decided during the court proceedings that he was actually a woman called Isla Bryson, despite being a big muscly male with facial tattoos like Mike Tyson and bulges in all the wrong places. Under gender ideology, he was now a she because he said so, so lawyers had to refer to her penis and she was transferred to a Scottish women's prison, which is obviously a terrible place to put a male rapist. And even if people don't have bad intentions, what about the feelings of women? You can identify as whatever you want and if people want they can play along. But why do you have to have access to everything? Can't you identify as a woman and stay out of female sports and female prisons and rape crisis centres and female only apps? It's a safety issue. The Giggle app was for women to meet up, flat share, for lesbians to date, all areas that are vulnerable to being targeted and harassed by men. Lesbians have said that they're pressured to have sex and relationships with trans women and the inclusion of males on these apps can be exploited by men who want to tickle their tackle while creeping on women. And in sports it's an issue of fairness. An Australian women's soccer team that has five biological men in its squad has won all 16 of the season's matches and is now champion of the women's premier league division. Why would someone with genuine intentions want to bully their way into these spaces? A biological male ran a rape crisis centre in Edinburgh. You might think that women accessing a service helping women recover from male violence might have genuine reasons for not wanting a biological male to be running the place. But the person running it, Meridal Wadwa, labelled female rape victims bigots and transphobes if they questioned it. Although interestingly, people protesting against Sal Grover and her female only app demanded a turf free zone. It's good to see some people are allowed freedom of association and to ban who they want from their space, just not women who actually need it. Following the legal action the app has been shut down. It's reminiscent of the Taliban, the Islamic government in Afghanistan, who this week said that women aren't allowed to speak or look at men. There's a reason women need their own spaces. Historically, men have policed women's speech and behaviour and women need a place to feel free. I feel like women in the West had about two weeks of equality and freedom before the patriarchy put on a wig and some nasty nylon tights and found a way to impose the patriarchy again. But this new patriarchy doesn't build empires, it's not engineers and great thinkers. This patriarchy is weird stalkerish sexual fetishists who get a kick out of making women feel uncomfortable and they're supported by the new patriarchal religion of gender ideology which is embedded in all of our institutions. This is just going to bring blowback on normal trans people who actually put an effort to look like their chosen gender and to be honest were just minding their own business before trans rights activists who mainly seem to be weird men with nefarious motivations came along and demanded access to women only spaces. Our institutions have been almost completely ideologically captured. Saying that biology is a science and chromosomes determine sex is now overruled in the courts. So what is a woman? The court and trans ideologists say a woman is anyone who identifies as a woman, which is a meaningless circular definition. But we all know what a woman really is, as this trans ally at a pride march accidentally revealed. Beautiful trans woman out here, tell us about your transition, how it went. Can I hold this please? No. Um, so I have a question for you. Why are you asking me those questions? Like we're interviewing like trans women and stuff like that. I'm not a trans woman, I'm a... Oh, no, no, we're, we're fully supportive. Do you want to talk about sort of transitioning or anything like that? Or like what I people can I never transitioned because I was born a woman. No, of course you're a woman, of course. Uh, does it make a trans woman any no. less of a woman? No, you are 100% a woman. Uh, I'm not a trans woman. Is there another definition that people like to use or? You, you thought I was a man? Anyway, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and you can buy me half a pint of beer on the link below. And if you want to support me making these videos and get exclusive content, be part of a nice community of the only sane people left in the West, then sign up to my Patreon. There's a link below. Anyway, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kears. Bye. Bye-bye.